Welcome to our World News Program. Today, we're diving into some pressing global developments that are shaping our world. First off, Turkey has put a halt to all trade with Israel, citing the latter's military actions in Gaza. This move marks a significant escalation in the diplomatic tensions between the two nations, with Turkey also joining a legal case against Israel at the International Court of Justice. Moving over to technology, the European Union is dreaming big with plans to revive its semiconductor industry, aiming to double its global chip production capacity by 2030. However, questions loom over the feasibility of this ambitious goal, given the fierce competition and massive investments by other global players. Lastly, the strategic chessboard of international defense is witnessing new moves as the U.S. revises its defense plans in the Indo-Pacific region, in response to joint military exercises between China and Russia near Taiwan. These developments highlight the intricate dance of diplomacy, technology, and military strategy on the global stage. Please stay tuned for more detailed coverage on these stories. The global stage is once again set with actions and reactions that paint a complex picture of international relations, technology ambitions, and military strategies. From Turkey's bold stance against Israel to the European Union's dreams of semiconductor sovereignty, and the strategic military exercises by China and Russia near Taiwan, each move has significant implications for the global order. Starting in the Middle East, Turkey has taken a firm stance against Israel by halting all trade between the two nations, as reported by the Associated Press. This decision is in direct response to Israel's ongoing military actions in Gaza, which Turkey has strongly condemned. The Turkish trade ministry has labeled this move as the second phase of measures against Israel, with a clear message that more actions are to follow until Israel ensures an uninterrupted flow of humanitarian aid to Gaza. This escalation follows Turkey's earlier restrictions on exports of 54 types of products to Israel, prompting Israel to impose trade barriers in retaliation. The tension between the two countries is not new but has intensified under President Recep Tayyip Erdogan's leadership, who has been vocal in his criticism of Israel's actions in Gaza and his support for Hamas as freedom fighters. Furthermore, Turkey's decision to join a legal case against Israel at the International Court of Justice, alongside South Africa, accusing Israel of breaching the Genocide Convention, marks a significant escalation in the diplomatic standoff. Across continents, in Europe, the European Union is embarking on an ambitious journey to reclaim its status in the global semiconductor industry, as detailed by Nikkei Asia. With its share of global chip production capacity dwindling to a mere 8%, the EU is facing an uphill battle against the dominant forces of Asia, which now account for over 90% of cutting-edge chip production. In a bold move, the EU has unveiled a €43 billion Euro package aimed at doubling its production capacity to 20% by 2030. However, industry veterans and analysts are skeptical, questioning whether this financial push is sufficient to compete with the massive investments and incentives offered by the US, Japan, and China. The EU's strategy also faces internal challenges, as member states struggle to match the proposed subsidies with public funds. Critics argue that the EU's ambitions might be better focused on less advanced semiconductors, which are crucial for automotive, industrial, and consumer electronics, rather than competing in the high-stakes race for cutting-edge chips. The success of this endeavor will require not just financial investment but a long-term commitment to building a skilled workforce and fostering innovation. Meanwhile, in the Pacific, the strategic military landscape is shifting as China and Russia conduct joint military exercises near Taiwan, prompting the United States to rethink its defense strategies in the region, according to the South China Morning Post. These exercises signal a deepening cooperation between China and Russia, challenging the U.S.'s position and forcing a re-evaluation of its military and strategic planning in Asia. Top U.S. intelligence officials, speaking before the Senate Armed Services Committee, highlighted the growing concerns over Beijing's support for Moscow and the potential vulnerabilities this poses to U.S. military and infrastructure assets. The officials accused China and Russia of engaging in cyber disruption and embedding malware into U.S. infrastructure, underlining the multifaceted nature of the threats posed by these joint exercises. Each of these developments, Turkey's trade halt with Israel, the EU's semiconductor ambitions, and the China-Russia military exercises near Taiwan, underscores the intricate web of geopolitical, economic, and military dynamics shaping the world today. As nations navigate these challenges, the outcomes of these actions and reactions will undoubtedly have far-reaching implications for global stability, economic prosperity, and strategic alliances. In an era where geopolitical tensions simmer and the global stage is fraught with uncertainties, the moves made by nations in the realms of military preparedness, legislative actions, and diplomatic strategies are more scrutinized than ever. 
From the vast expanses of the Indo-Pacific to the legislative chambers of Florida, and from the war-torn regions of Gaza to the power corridors of the Kremlin, a series of developments have unfolded, each with its own implications for global stability and security. Nikkei Asia reports a significant strategic shift by the U.S. Navy, under the guidance of Navy Secretary Carlos del Toro, which is set to redefine naval logistics and maintenance in the face of rising challenges from China. The U.S. military is planning an ambitious project to utilize international shipyards for the maintenance of up to six American naval ships in the next fiscal year, pending congressional approval. This initiative is not merely a logistical adjustment, it's a strategic maneuver aimed at enhancing the U.S. Navy's operational readiness in the Indo-Pacific region. By certifying shipyards that meet U.S. standards outside the traditional repair locales of Guam, Hawaii, or the U.S. West Coast, the Navy aims to ensure that its vessels can be quickly repaired and returned to the front lines, a necessity in keeping pace with China's expanding naval capabilities. Meanwhile, on the domestic front, Yahoo US highlights a legislative development out of Florida that has stirred the pot in the food industry. Governor Ron DeSantis has taken a bold step by signing a bill that bans and criminalizes the manufacture and sale of lab-grown meat in the state. This move places Florida alongside four other states in a growing trend that pits traditional agricultural practices against the burgeoning field of lab-grown foods. The implications of this legislation extend beyond the borders of Florida, potentially influencing food production methods and ethical considerations nationwide. The international arena is not without its tensions, as foreign policy delves into the complex dynamics of Israel's military strategy in Gaza. Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmytro Kaleba shared his concerns about the delayed U.S. aid to Ukraine, highlighting the detrimental effects on the country's defense capabilities and morale. Yet, there is a glimmer of hope that the new influx of aid could turn the tide. Kaleba's insights underscore the precarious balance of power and the critical importance of timely support in conflict zones. Concurrently, U.S. Rep. Adam Smith, a leading Democrat on the House Armed Services Committee, voiced his apprehensions regarding Israel's approach to the conflict in Gaza. Smith's call for a ceasefire and a reassessment of the humanitarian situation in Gaza reflects a broader debate within the U.S. political landscape about the long-term implications of Israel's military actions and the shifting sentiments towards the Israeli government among Democrats. In a dramatic turn of events within Russia's political elite, the arrest of Deputy Defense Minister Timur Ivanov on corruption charges has exposed a rift within the Kremlin. This development, as reported by Foreign Policy, is indicative of the intense power struggles and internal conflicts that plague the Russian government. The implications of Ivanov's arrest extend beyond his personal fate, suggesting a concerted effort to destabilize Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu ahead of anticipated government reshuffles. The involvement of Mikhail Khodorkovsky, a former oil tycoon and a known critic of the Kremlin, in speculating about Ivanov's potential testimony against Shoigu adds another layer of intrigue to the unfolding drama. These developments, spanning the military, legislative, and diplomatic spheres, underscore the complexity of the current global landscape. From the strategic recalibration of the U.S. Navy in the Indo-Pacific to Florida's stance on lab-grown meat, from the ongoing conflicts in Gaza to the internal power struggles in the Kremlin, the interplay of these events shapes the contours of international relations and domestic policies. As nations navigate these turbulent waters, the decisions made today will undoubtedly have far-reaching consequences for global stability, security, and the very fabric of international cooperation. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.